Welcome to the channel and this new series where we are going to be playing Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Now I'm aware many people don't like long introductions so there'll be two timestamps appearing now. The first timestamp will allow you to skip the actual introduction and take you to the character creation screen. The second timestamp will allow you to jump over the whole creation process and take you straight onto the campaign map. Now if you decide to stay for the introduction, welcome. And this introduction is going to consist of two parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk a little bit about Bannerlord and its history. And then the second part, I'm going to be talking about why I'm actually playing the game. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord has been on a long time coming. It was finally released into early access at the end of March 2020, if you're watching this in the future. And it's had a pretty good reception, even though there have been a few problems with bugs. But then there has been a regular um, update process where the focus at the moment is very much on performance and fixing outstanding bugs. But there, so when you start a series with this game at the moment, there is a very real risk that an update will come out which will break the save game. I actually bought Bannerlord when it was released, but I wasn't really intending to make a series on it. The reason I actually bought the game was to try and finally learn the combat system. And probably the best way to explain that is that I played the original Mountain Blade Warband and eventually I gave up because I just couldn't get uh, a feeling for the combat system. I spent more time getting killed in simple battles and it got very frustrating. But I, I did really enjoy the game and that is the reason why I actually bought Bannerlord so that I could play off camera and learn the combat system. And that's what I've been doing for a couple of weeks now. I mean, I haven't got that many hours into it. I've got about 10 hours, I think overall gameplay now that leads me on to why i'm actually making the series now well i i i've got a friend who's also bought um bannerlord and they are a completely new player and i was talking to them about you know how you go about learning and and the, and that there's more to the game than just going around uh, fighting continuous battles that there are other stories which will probably grow over time so the result of the conversation was is that he asked me if i would do a series because of my limited knowledge in the combat system and the game overall, play it as a new player, explore the game, make mistakes, try and look into some of the other mechanics. And after a little bit of thought, I thought, yeah, why not? Let's, let's, let's go for it. I'll probably make myself look a complete fool. So for anyone who's actually an expert in Mountain Blade, especially Bannerlord, this may not be the series for you. But if you're someone who just wants to know a bit about the game and what the experience is when you're first starting out, this might be the series for you and I think that's about enough of the introduction so what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump into the campaign option here we are at the start of the character creation process anyone who's skipped forward welcome and before we get into actually creating the character I just want to give a bit of a backstory of the character that I'm going to be playing now for me this is going to be a little bit of a digression and I'm going to be playing a female character I don't normally play female characters in RPG games but I'm going to play a female character in this series as a counterpoint to what I've seen in a lot of other Let's Plays where there's the the, the players have gone for characters who have been very much in-your-face hard fighters leading from the front. What I want to do in this series is have a character that's maybe going to be more of a general at the back. They're not going to be charging in with a two-handed axe. And also want, I also want to use them as a reminder that I want to focus on some of the other elements of the game, especially the trading element. That's the reason why we're going to have a female character. And to reinforce that process, I'm actually going to have a top level backstory, which then fits into the backstory of the game. This character is going to be the daughter of a Aziri a father and a Kozai mother. And she's effectively grown up in Azuri territory with a background in merchants and trading leading caravans and life was really good for her and what's actually happened is as the various wars have raged across the land her father was leading a caravan up through empire territory and he was ambushed and killed by empire forces and that has really affected the character she's now got an undying hatred for the empire in some ways she's lost her identity a little bit because she no longer knows is she Azurai, is she Kuzite and at the same time because of her background she's not a natural warrior so in some ways she's returning to the lands of her mother to learn to be a warrior to take the war to the empire and anyone else who stands in a way so that's going to be very much the background story of this character 
and what we're going to be trying to build. And I think that's probably enough. We'll fill in some more detail as we go along. And of course, we're going to be bringing the Kuzates. I think that's how you pronounce it. The Kuzite Confederation of Steppe Tribes is used to, used to live a nomadic life, but recently they've settled on the eastern front of the empire and are slowly transitioning from their agrarian society with permanent town centers. Despite this, they still retain many aspects of their nomadic life, including to an affinity to horses. They are masters of mounted archery, shooting and galloping out of reach. You can see we get a 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on the campaign map. So here we are with the character customization. I'm, I'm not going to spend too long on this. I'm just going to randomize the character. I think that's I think that's probably good from a character point of view. Probably she, um, Azeris and Mongols have dark hair. So maybe we'll take her hair back a little bit further, a bit darker. As I say, one of the one of the things about this game is that you I've seen people spend a lot of time creating the character, but effectively once you get um they start getting coated with armor, the only thing that really counts is the face. And I think her face is okay. Uh, let's have a look here. Maybe should we I don't know, we won't give her a tap, but what we can do is maybe just have a look at that's horrible. Okay. You can play, you can give her blue lips if you want. <laughs> um, it's a bit pale. Uh, maybe we'll go with that. And I think let's just go back to the body. It's quite small, but in some ways that that will again emphasize the area. Maybe we'll give her a bit of a tan. She has grown up in the Zauri territory. Riding in the desert. I think that will be good enough. So we're just gonna move on. So now we, we're gonna start building our character's family. Well, she's gonna come from a family of merchants. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't really know much about what the min max option of this is. So what I'm gonna do is build a character according to the backstory. And she her father was a merchant. In fact, that's probably a good comparison there. You've got although she should have darker hair. So you've got the Kuzite mother and the Azari father in the background. I think that's maybe that's that's pretty um, useful actually. So that gives us skill points in charm and trade. A lot of the skills I'm going to be in this bottom section in cunning, social, and intelligence. We're going to start as a, a pretty low grade um, warrior. So we're not so that's not going to be particularly that important. And what we're going to have here, we got leadership skills, brawn, no, attention to detail. Not sure how attention to detail gives you um, one-handed and endurance. Aptitude with numbers would be nice, but I'm not sure. I actually like way with people, skill with horses. I think we'll go with way with people because that builds this area, which is what I want to build. You can say always attentive. And to keep the story going, we're certainly going to be um, select using markets and caravans. Um, let's see. Let's have another look through. Tutor. Yeah, we're certainly going to go with that because it says you helped your family handle your bad business affairs going down the marketplace, make purchases, oversee the arrival of caravans. Yes, so this is going to be her background and uh, youth. In war talk, our radio, especially in the frontier tribal areas, some women are as well as men learn to fight as early. Yeah, I, I'm sure I definitely want her to be a horse archer. Uh, garrison. Engineering bow. No. Actually, I think it's going to have to be rode with scouts. I think trained with the infantry. No. I certainly don't want to be a skirmisher, and I certainly don't want to have marched with the camp followers. So it's going to have to be rode with scouts. So that gives us bow and some riding. And then moving on, let's say young adulthood. Before you set out on a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was defeated an enemy in battle. You led a caravan. Uh, make money in a workshop, survived a siege, claim this escapade, treated people well. Uh, I think it's going to be led a caravan or treated people well. I think we're going to go for led a caravan because that gives me cunning a bit of social skills. Tactics is going to be quite important because that's how you command armies. And so we've now got to the final stage, and this is the story background. It says, like many families in Cold Radio, your life was upended by the war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of the army after army. Eventually, you sold up your property and set off your father, mother, and brother, siblings to a new town where they heard of a safe. You did not make it 
Along the way, the, uh, the inn with which they were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain and two young siblings seized and your brother survived because... I'm kind of spinning this backstory a little bit by saying that her parents were actually killed whilst leading a caravan by um, Empire troops. So that brings in the hatred of the Empire. So there'd be, there's going to be no compromise with the Empire whatsoever. Other kingdoms, there might be a little bit of work. In fact, there's a possibility of being a mercenary. So we could subdue the raider. The stance. <laughs> um, drove off with arrows. That's not too bad. Uh, so I think it's probably have to be drove off with arrows or rode off on a fast horse, trick the raiders. I think that just overtops these too much. The question is, do I want archery? And scouting would be good because that allows us to spot more going. I think we're going to ride off on a fast horse. So this is going to be the final profile. We've got nothing in vigor. We've got just bow in control. That just gives us a little bit of a start. We've got um, a good horse riding skills. We've got a little bit of scouting, a little bit of cunning there. And of course, we've got really maxed out in social. We're going to need to get some stuff into intelligence. Steward is a late game skill. I do definitely know that. So we don't need to do that. I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll move on to next. Now, the name we're going to be using is, I think it's called Kembish. This is a Mongolian name, which means nobody. Now, the definition of nobody is, isn't the what most people would think immediately by saying, oh, I'm nobody. It actually relates to a, a Buddhist philosophy where in order to find yourself, you've got to become nobody. And I'm, I've got no intention of discussing Buddhist philosophy, but that's the reason why we're usually using this name. And so, so that's going to be our name, Kembish. Now comes the fun bit, difficulty. Now I do want to challenge with this, but at the same time, am I going to push my luck too far? Now I'm going to be completely honest, every, every, all my gameplay so far has been this profile. So we'll just put this profile in. Uh, recruitment difficulty. Recruitment changed with the re most recent update. Before that update, it was very easy to recruit, but what they, what they did is in that up, the most recent update is they introduced a change where the faction armies go around all the cities recruiting everyone so if you're not quick you actually get to places and there's no recruits especially depending on how the wars go i think we're going to go realistic there map movement speed i think we'll stay easy so we've got a five percent bonus because it does take a long time to get around the map combat ai difficulty is normal it says enable death here choose if here i think we won't switch that on auto allocate clan member perks Enable auto allocation of perks for members in your clan. I think that's to do with the all companions. Now, every, every all the play I've done so far, that has been switched on. I think we'll leave it switched off just to see what happens. And I think that is about it. We, we're a horse archer. If you're new to the game, pay attention to this loadout screen and especially the weapons that the character is carrying because these will be the weapons that we will have when you actually start. So she's an archer. The sword is almost de facto, but if she's got a pole armor or javelins, then that's the, what you're going to get. So we're just going to start the game. So here we are on the gameplay map. For anybody who skipped forward, welcome to the series. And you can see we've got a nice back view of the female character we're going to be playing. She's going to be a horse archer. And this screen here is the process of getting you into the campaign map. This guy looking at us is her brother, although he disappears really quickly and I've never seen him again. And, and that bar there shows your relationship with him. We're just going to get through to here. Now, I'm not going to do the tutorial because the tutorial is great, especially if you're a new player, to learn the basic strokes and probably key things like attacking with the sword and more, that's probably most importantly, blocking. But, but once you've got the basics tied down, the only thing you can really do is get in and start playing and just accept that when you get killed, you get killed, especially in, in uh, tournaments, which uh, I've, I've yet to win a tournament in this game so far. So we're going to skip the tutorial, and I'm not going to go through all this, because a lot of this is the background to the, the tutorial, and in some ways it's not really relevant to the, playing the actual main game. So here we are, we are in this training field, and we're just going to leave. And what we've got here is a notification. A few hours after you leave the training ground, you come across a wounded man lying on, 
under a tree you share your water with him and try to dress his wounds the best you can he tells you he is traveling doctor to thank you for your help he hands you a small bronze artifact which he says was once given to him in payment by a warrior who said only that it was related to Nuretzi's folly he suspects it might be a great value you resolve to find out more what we've got to do now is choose our clan name now i'm going to use the name morrigan morrigan i've taken from irish mythology depending on which story you read it's either a single goddess or with three incarnations or three separate goddess and what it actually this goddess is is a phantom princess that expires um troops to um great excesses of valor so i thought that might be appropriate for the series that we're actually going to do now we select a banner and it's, it was a little bit difficult and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to select this banner here this actually looks very much like a celtic knot but it is a populous uh, symbol in mongol society and it actually i think it's the stands for knowledge and the intertwining of knowledge uh, correct me if i'm wrong and i think we're going to go with that i actually do like uh, the dark color i think it fits with the the look actually makes the look a little bit better um i mean green now i think we'll stick with the black and we're just going to click done and we are back onto the map now a top tip for oops leave, please a top tip for anybody who's completely new to the game and this is your first time in what i suggest you do is you go in here and you actually oops save the game actually do a save as and what we'll do is just put in Kembish part one now the reason for saving the game is that if you get out here and everything goes wrong very quickly you it doesn't mean you've got to keep going back through the character creation screen we're here now we're just going to zoom out and you can see how big the map is our father's lands are down here this is the lands of the Zuri. Our mother's lands are up here. This is the lands of the Kuzite. The Empire, our hated enemy, occupies the center. Up here, we've got the um, Sturgeons. And now this is where I embarrass myself. I think these are the Bretonians. And I uh, can't actually remember what this faction is, actually. The Valandia. And then in the center, we've got the three empires. I think we've got the Northern Empire. Uh, they've got the Western Empire the southern empire and up here we've got the northern empire effectively they're all our enemies in the center there there's also various other small clans that wander around uh, being a nuisance who join up in fact the, the whole way this game works is you've got kingdoms which are then occupied with clans now the next thing i'll do is just get these tags through and our you can say that probably the important mission here is to rebuild our clan because until you've rebuilt the clan you can't really do much in this game except for wander around and kill looters um, which is probably what we're going to be doing quite a lot of and you can see we've got to get to 2000 denarii we've got to get a party size of 20 we've got to reach clan tier one we've got a pretty good start actually we've got 23 renown out of 50 we've got to hire a companion we should be able to do that and then what we've got also got to do is wander around the map and find 10 nobles to talk to it's something which i would like to do i've never yet completed this mission because I've never really paid much attention to it, to be honest. So we're now on the map, and what I want to do is get over to the Kuzite lands over here. Now, if you're completely new to the game, or if you're playing the Empire, or you just want troops, the first place you want to head to is come to here. There's normally troops that you can recruit here, and you come in here. But we're not going to recruit troops. We're not going to have any Empire uh, troops in our armies at all. And what I am going to do is just look at products. No, there's nothing cheap here. Uh, so, because what I would like to do, again, if I... Oh, sorry. I haven't done this. I've got an extra skill. I'm just going to put the extra skill in bow just so that I can learn this a lot quicker. And we've actually got a, a, a perk already. Wow. So we've got Icebreaker, personal. When introducing yourself to the Lords for the first time, there's a temper chance to chance of gain two plus two relations with them um barter penalty mm. uh, the barter could be useful because sometimes to get things you've got to barter this is i think we're going to go with that 
As I was about to say, if you come into the inventory, you'll see that the carry capacity of a party is really is almost infinite. But you can see I've only got a carry capacity of 30. And that's nowhere near. So what I want to do first is get a horse. Now there's four locations around here where we can get a horse. There's one up here, one down here, one here, and one here. Now the game when the game starts, a lot of parameters are set randomly, especially prices. We'll see what we can get in the way. Oh, we've got nine looters over there. We're going to keep an eye out on those white products. And what I'm looking for is a Midlands port. Well, that's expensive, 167. Uh, let's just go over to, actually, let's go north a little bit. We'll go back to Porus in a little while. If you if you put if you put the cursor over these minor settlements, it actually tells you what um, these are worth. I mean, we can outrun here. You can see we've got a top speed of 6.1. That's because we're on a sumter horse. This is another reason why I want to get a better horse. Go so, to here. Hidden's pole for 163. God, these are all expensive. You can see here. See, the Midlands pole free has got a sp speed of 47 over 34. Oh, another top tip. If you want to keep anything and not sell anything by accident, make sure you lock your things. Yes. I may have to... What? Oh. Ah. Okay, we need to talk to them. If you see anyone with a little exclamation mark there, they're related to the main quest. So this is a... Running into her is quite a, a good benefit. It gets us off to a good start. I see. Tell me anything about the battle. Of course, it did not witness battle. My husband wrote frequently of it. And... A small force and so we if we come in here you will see we've now spoke to one of ten people I think there's two people in every every kingdom and I think of uh, six uh, kingdoms so what should happen is uh, um, so what should actually happen is that you should be, be able to meet ten quasies so the Midlands Palfrey is 150 got a step horse here speed of 46 so that's actually got better maneuver um i actually like the idea of a step horse to be honest it would save me buying one i, th I think we're going to push the boat out and get one there and you'll see here because the sumter horse has actually allowed me to increase my carry capacity by 100 because mules and sumter horses are effectively uh, you could say cargo carrying capacity where if you look at the desert horses and the palfreys these are combat horses so so if you ever get a sumter horse hang on to it even though they, they appear to be useless and i think we're i want to go down to poor us and we'll see if we can get any trade here we're just going to look at the trade because we are a trader so i don't think what does it say there it's green it's so if we come into here well, if we go there yeah, this item is 20% cheaper, but it's not telling us where we can sell anything because we haven't actually been to another city. So, so what we're going to have to do is come out of here and leave. And, and again, if I show you now, still got 6.5. That should keep us out of mischief. Oh, the other thing I've forgotten to do is I'm just going to go to clan. I'm going to make myself a scout for the moment. And if you ride up amongst these high rocks here like this, what you will see is if I ride through here, five looters over there, a bit tempted to go and we should be able to take five looters with a bow and arrow. Ah, well, we're going to find out if we can now. Okay. We've got 27 arrows. But if I, if I fire at them, you'll see the accuracy at the moment, even when you think you're aiming at them, is pretty bad. What you're going to do is let them get close. And then ride away. Oops. Left that a bit too late. Now, as long as you are a archer, you can normally take down four looters. Oops. Oops. Oh. Uh, 
run away. I mean, if you're an experienced player used to combat, you could probably take down five looters with any other weapon, but uh, we have to be a little bit careful. And apologies if I don't say much during these bits here. When you get too close together like that, you normally get a pretty good chance of hitting at least one of them. So when they group up, that's great. But when they're in a loose line, it, your accuracy can be a little bit subject. Sometimes what you can do, if you kind of come in like that and then swerve away. And the reason I'm turning and actually facing at them like this is that... Ah, come on. Yeah, if you turn and face them and stand still, you actually improve your accuracy. Um, um, it's a bit too early in the game at the moment to, how can you say, be shooting on the run. See, I shot right between the two of them there. Ah, got them. And of course, when you hit them, they actually get stunned. So, so if you get a strike, they, they're stunned temporarily and they can't throw rocks at you. The rocks are actually the more dangerous thing when it comes to looters. See how far out that was? See, two shots and it went each side. I've still got 11 shots, so we're, we're okay. And of course, if you are new to the game and you want to practice archery, this might be a way to do it. And of course, it's worth noting that in this game, you can't actually die. Gotcha. Yeah, what actually happens is if you lose a battle, you get taken prisoner. You lose a lot from your inventory and normally you either got to pay to be let go or you escape. So in some ways, in this game, it's very important that what you actually do is you fight and win every single battle. Especially once as you move forward and you get a bigger party, you because you can lose the whole party. Anyway, we've now won this battle. We took them through it. We, we killed five, and it looks like I actually got level up. And, and of course, we got a little bit of loot, which is not. I'm going to keep the olives for the moment. Um, because of course because we killed everybody <laughs> we haven't actually got any prisoners but i did take a bit of damage so we're going to need to uh, i'm in trouble maybe we can work something out okay there's no way i could have beaten 18. oops no, i'm asking for money so let's just cancel that so they want 100 and yeah. So they want 177. In some ways, just paying to get away. Yeah, that's because I was talking, I didn't see those 18 loot um, there, which is a little bit of a pain, but I didn't lose the horse or anything like that. So, in some ways, it's quite important. You see the prices here. We've got a sumter horse here, and what we can do is make it back a little bit of the money I've just spent by doing that. And what we should be able to do now is see if we can find some trade. The trade is often down here. It says they can sell in uh, a Lycon for 154. So what we're going to do is just grab a, a little bit, and we're going to get a little bit of trade running. And you can see why I've got the horse. The, I got the horse. Actually, I don't have enough money because huh. I've spent it all, didn't I? And of course, this is something you can do when you're a single character. Although, it, as I say, it is a precarious existence. But one thing about the your character is that the character you don't pay any wages, you don't consume any food. So what you can do is just come up and just run up through here. What I want to do is just do a little bit of trading in this area just to get some money, especially seeing the fact that I had to bribe to escape. So we're just going to come to trading here. And what we're going to do is just give that, and that gives 838. And let's see what we can go back to Puros. Puros, that's pretty good actually, that linen. We're buying at 58 and we're selling, at, selling Puros for 137. Uh, whoops, 
Let's from there. And then we'll go. Run back the other way. I know this isn't particularly that exciting, but what I want to do is just highlight the how the trading system works. And and I mean it you can't make vast sums of money. Go away, looters. There's a lot of game the, the, the proximity of looters is is a random element at the start of the game so maybe we don't want to hang around here too long but we'll just do a little bit more trade now i'm just going to sell the linen we got oh, back over a thousand and can we sell anything else up in what was it buy like on got to pay attention to what you can buy and what you can sell so um let's We can sell, take the furs. So we got up to 617. I promise this will be the last run, and then we'll start making our way towards uh, Kurzite lands. I'm just going to run up here. Keep away from the looters. <laughs> Sometimes, if, if you've got looters close by, what you can do is run for here. And then just wait for a little while and you see the looters turn up there's some an army coming again if you get into trouble run for an army <laughs> and we're just going to come up to here and we've got a little bit of trade i'll sell that because it's 719 um, now think about this if you see the color here it says here this item's cost is near average that now you've got to be careful, and you see where it says the red, it says this is more expensive. And let's just go here. And see if I'm looking for, see if there's anything that's green. We've got some furs here. What's that? It's 20% cheaper. I don't think that's going to really work. I'm not feeding anything here. So we're just gonna, there we go. And of course, one thing I have been avoiding here is a tournament. I should have been checking those. Although, to be, as I said, I've yet to win a tournament in this game. Um, trading in horses is not particularly that worth it, especially as we're going to the land of horses, which is the Kuzite. So eventually, we'll be using step horses. I think we can take that looter down. Just need to make sure. No, we don't. Yeah, I think we can nail these guys actually. Oops, too late. Okay, it's six on the one, but we'll be okay. Back. Um, just gonna stand here. Let them get close. We're in a nice, neat little row, but that's not exactly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run off. Run at a right angle. Oops, they just chucked a rock at me. Yeah, anti-social kids. Right, they've now bunched up. And we should be able to get two good shots into them. Oh, they managed to hit me. That's anti-social. And go try a long shot. Oops, got another rock into me. Still got 21 arrows, so we should be okay. Right there, in a pretty tight group. So we should be able to... Got one down. Oops, the red line is the edge of the map, and they're saying over here. Because I've, I've effectively left the area. I think you get 10 seconds to get in. I've got no idea what happens when the 10 seconds is up. If any of you know, feel free to chuck it in the comments. And uh, see. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just going to run away again. Right, they've got a nice, fairly tight grouping. You can keep them grouped together, you can do 
Oops. Missed. By the way, again, got 13 arrows left. We should got more than enough arrows to finish this battle off, as long as I don't do anything stupid. Look at that, they're all in a row now. You're dead. And curiously enough, one of them's only wounded. So we should be able to get ourselves our first prisoner. And what we got here. It pays to compare with what you've already got. At the moment I've got two, three, six. Nothing there. And I've got a good hat here, so. Take all the loot. Not a vast amount of loot, but of course what we can do is come into here and we can sell 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 it off. Doesn't pay to lug too much of it around. We got here. That's actually not a bad price for grain, nine. So I think we're gonna buy buy some of those. I'm just buying this cheap for when I start to recruit troops. So we're just going to some arm wraps there but the arm wraps are quite common in the way of loot so and I think we need to get to PyCon and got more grain here there's 15 looters there so you have to be a little bit careful so our speed the speed is six yeah let's just have a check of a product here Still nine. Mm, butter and cheese. Being done. Oh, do you want? These people actually give you missions, but when you're on your own, don't worry about the missions. The only mission you can really do is deliver a herd, but that's quite high risk. We we'll just do this. We got wow. We have got three skill points, and I've been wandering around here. We've also got to level up there, so we're going to increase our accuracy by ten percent. And wow, we got. I should have been doing this. We've got something bigger on the horse. We're certainly going to get three extra arrows. I mean, we've leveled up quite well, actually. Um, my instinct is to put the attribute point into bow. But, I mean, we've got five for charm. I think uh, let's do the, the focus points first. I want to put one into, tr into stewardship. Uh, I wouldn't mind a second one into tactics. We'll keep one spare just for the moment. I think two for bow and riding is okay. Scouting, let's have a look at scouting. When we got where well, I've been riding over the rough terrain and spotting tracks, we, we are getting a little bit of uh, experience in scouting. Um, scouting and tactics. I'm a bit worried about the fact that, in fact, I'm going to put one into here because we're going to need the stewardship going forward. So I'm a little bit worried. I know there's looters here, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful now. We're running that way. So. Ah, there's a. Okay. We'll just go in Pycone. Uh, what you got? Army of poachers. Yeah, that's their bad news. We got here desert horse 219, saddle horse 161. That's got more speed, but I must admit, I prefer the step horses. Now, one of the curiosities of the trading system is that it, it gives you prices in settlements you visited, not onwards. So, some ways you've got to kind of learn the trading system as you go forward. And so, it's like here, we, we, we could um, buy the hardwood and go all the way back to porous, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, fish, meat, grapes, beer. When I, mean, I could take a chance and buy something for an average price, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I mean, we've got 1,003. And, and let's go that way. And we're just going to 
trees is one of the areas of greatest risk when you're on your own or even when you're with a small party yeah forest bandits they're bad news okay keep away from their 4.9 yeah forest ba bandits have uh bows and they can really chew up the silver ore that can be useful let's have a look at the silver ore we might better get a nice trade here by products I got 188. Yeah. Uh, how much silver ore can I carry? I think we're going to buy some silver ore. We're going to have to go back, double back on ourselves. Extortion, yeah. I must admit, the developers are going to have to work a little bit on the, the quest and missions. Because uh, some of them are good, some of them are pretty bad. And just want to keep away from those forest bandits. Uh, there's some more there. I don't want to go head to head with any forest bandits at the moment. The, my limit is five or six looters. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get any. You can see the messages come up on the left hand side. It looks like the wars have already started. So, and of course, the advantage is if we can get into here. Oh, look. Aha, we've got eight looters. Of course, if we go to the tavern district, I can start ransom that prisoner off. Now, you, well, as the game progresses, you can actually put them into the castle keeps, but then what we're going to do is sell off the silver or 726. But of course, what we've got now is because we've got the other settlement, that's porous, like on. Actually, quite like that, so they get that because it's 1500. Should have gone down to there first. But I think this guy is. Uh, I think this is an independent clan here doing his thing. We're just going to run around here, around again. I mean, we've got 1,522. Oops. What we got here? Got. Well, you sometimes you get notifications here for. No, oh, we got something in trade here. What do we get here? Uh, five percent decrease trade penalty for equipment. Certainly don't want that. We're, we're certainly going to have to tr get rid of that. So that will give us something there. What I'm really aiming for is the next level up because you see here it says pay twenty percent less for wage for caravans. But more importantly, it says below also your party can carry thirty percent more weight. It says appraiser. Also your profits are marked and required. So if I oh, oh there's six looters there. I think we can take them out. <laughs> eh, fight me if you dare. One tip though is if you've got two groups of looters close together, count both of them as the ones that you are going to be attacking. Oops, missed him. Okay, right off. Wasted two arrows. Oh, wait. Stop chucking the box at my horse. Okay, they're bunched up now. Get them to bunch your bad accuracy doesn't actually affect okay uh, bit of a hit shot there we keep running oops the rocks are coming get up onto the this little bit of a rise here um, oh look at that they're all in a line Still managed to miss. Missed twice. Aha. Right, what we'll do is ride past them quickly like that. See the rocks fly over there. That wasn't. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn. And oh, slightly off. But yeah. Come on, guys. Got 16 arrows left. Oh, they're in a nice line. That's it. Form a line here, please. When you can turn 90 degrees to them, what you can't shoot is to the right. Oops, no. But I find it's actually, if you face onto them, 
Oops, got a bit of a hit on me. Well, the flying rocks are a pain in the neck in this game, but um, got you. Got you. I mean, to be honest, if you're a novice, I know the archer isn't is used by many people, but if you're just starting out in the game. Starting off with um, bow is probably a good way to start because some of the other weapons they seem simple, you just go in and hack and slash, but they can be a little bit complicated. So if we can get a better shot, whoops, okay, whoops, I ah, shouldn't have stayed, he's managed to get a decent hit on me. I need to concentrate. Yeah. Yeah, especially from horseback. You know, I mean, just to show you, the sword here is quite a complicated thing, especially if you've got a short sword, is learning the controls here. And if you've got yourself a pole arm, it can be a little bit tricky as well. So, I've got some stuff there. And we'll take the looter prisoner. Now, if you carry too many uh, looters with you, um, or if you carry too many prisoners with you, you will actually slow you down. So we just got that there because it's a little bit of armor for our arms for free. Um, where we're heading, we're heading over that way actually. Bridges of. Is the lake rats. The lake rats are an independent clan. Um, oops, I've just spoken to by accident. Well, Kemish, what's your name? So you can see they, they're not tied into the main quest. So, you know, come out here. Mm. What I want to do is just get over to here. There's 14 looters over there, would be okay. And just get to Tavern District, get five gold for that. See, we're now getting close to um, land, so we get a step horse. Trade wise, the grain has gone up in price. And what you'll see over here now is that shows the green shows that if I sell the grain, I'll make a profit. This is the part of that perk. But you can still got, if you're not sure here, you can see his average. But this tells you whether you what you your grain is actually going to make you a profit selling stuff here so maybe as a bit of an example what's the this is cheaper so I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy uh, no we got to, can't carry too much we'll just buy one beer just as an experiment and we'll pay 28 um, and we've Oops, okay, there's six looters there. Oh, I'm a bit damaged, I shouldn't have done this. Okay, we'll just have to... <laughs> we may have to be doing, doing some bribery if this goes wrong. Um, get them to try and group in a straight line. Come on, boys, over here. Okay, I have to be a bit careful, I, I didn't heal up. Okay, they're all lined up. Quite obligingly. Get a third arrow in. Yeah. Um, top tip also try to avoid fighting in trees with the horse. Gotcha. And we're just gonna ride off around here. front if we can get you and it's gonna ride away again oh, did someone get a hit on me um. oops missed um. and what we're gonna do is run through the trees get them to reverse direction hopefully they will form a, a queue Oh, 
all spread out again. Okay. Oh, there's two there. Up oh, there. Got the, the nice uh, god rays coming through the trees there. Um, got two good hits on two of them, so they're wounded. Um, and we've still got arrows. Oh, look at that, all oh, in a line. Oops, missed. And there's two more down. There's only two left. Six, we got another level up. This is a quite a good way to actually level yourself up when you if you've got nothing else to do. And apologies, I know that some of you will find this a little bit boring, but this is the nature of the game. Um, how's our speed? Speed is 7.2. I definitely would like to get into uh desired territories in this video, so we're gonna I think we're just gonna push now. We've done enough messing about with we'll head for yeah this it's actually got cotton there's our our friend for the lake rats again and we're just gonna sell them. you can see the actual prices here uh can be a bit strange but we're just gonna sell that we made another 66 on for us is 88 Icon, we'd have to go back a very long way to make profit from that, so I'm not going to bother. And what I'm looking is to cross. Oops, ah, panicked a little bit there. Apologies for that. Got some grain here. I just want to get in here and see what the price of grain here. Grain is eight. I think we're buying a little bit more grain. This is effectively just a stock up. Or once I actually start to recruit, we're actually in the site lands here, but where are we? I need to go north, okay. It's not going to bother the looters, I'm aware that time is pushing on. We can probably go with that, go for those. But I need to be a bit careful, but okay. Ah. Fight me if you dare. It could be in trees here, which could be awkward. Although this is light scrub. We're going to pull away and get them into the open here. Didn't heal up completely again. Really should really stop and heal up, but. Um, oops, missed. Oh, got a hit. Let's get up over the top of the trees here. Oops, panic. Panic, 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 panic. Yeah, this isn't the ideal terrain because you can't get the long shots from them. Um, thought that was going to miss, but we actually got a couple of good shots in on them. Turn and face, and I think we can probably start going for some longer range Got a headshot there. That's good. Uh, let's, let's just keep running back this week. There's only five of them. Oh wow. Okay, maybe this isn't such a good position. No. This way a bit. See if we can get them to line up. Ah, they're bunched up now. That's a bit better. Yeah, a couple of good shots into them. Let's 
spread out a little bit more. Um, I think. This oh. just got hit in the ear with a rock. Okay, we're back where we started. We're all fairly grouped together. Pretty nice, pretty really nice shots there. the junk and so now what we can do now is we can actually do what we come here to do which is to recruit some troops um, the prices are bad but we can sell that and what I need to do now is we're going to move north because where I want to end up is right up here around here is a place that sells step horses uh, Step bandits are bad news. They they are very fast and they can actually uh, kill your um, take your troops out because they are all archers themselves. Check the products. It's all average price. Like on like Caron. No. Okay, just gonna leave. And what's my speed? We're still six point one. These are three point five. What we can have is now our first proper battle of these looters. And plus I need to get some experience for my troops. So, and of course we're going to attack. Now, when you've got low level troops like this, you will take casualties. But one way you can actually ease the casualties off a bit is you come as the player. And... And split that. Okay. Just draw them off. And Infantry! Three. That gives my troops the advantage because. <laughs> and here's the guy who's been following me. Go on, boys, in you get. Yeah, by distracting and splitting their forces, that allowed my troops to actually win. Now this screen becomes more relevant because what um probably I haven't really done this and just attack that. What you'll see is this is the number of troops remaining, this is the number of troops we've killed, this is the, the two of my troops have got promotions, and that's the these are the same stats for the defenders army. So that's it. and we've got one of the looters. Now we've got two upgrades here, but I'm not going to upgrade them just at the moment because I've got no horses. I'm just going to grab that a little bit of thing just to show you if I do this, go to the party. If I come in here, you will see this is red because it says you have no horses. So, and I don't really want infantry at the moment. What I want is some cavalry horses. Actually, if we get to check in, we got 1600. Let's get over to here. So we can get a couple more recruits. Um, boots. Nope, this is what I was saying that the armies that come around here. And we're just going to come up to Jake Rand. And um, group troops. We've got a couple more. Uh, trade. Uh, step horses. Yeah, you've got to pick it. Yeah, you've got to be kidding. I'm paying that price. And um, just going to see what we can get trade wise. Oros 50. No. Gonna do is we're just gonna leave. Um, I'm just gonna run up this way. Uh, your sheep, your grain. Oh, because we got a hideout here. We just found. Not interested. All I want to do is just run up here. I'm aware time is pushed. Oops, Mao Chong. Uh, he's the actual leader of the Kuzites, and we certainly want to catch him. Wait. 
probably off the wall somewhere. Uh, yeah, if you see the, the pale blue exclamation mark, it says talk to these people. Thank you. That gives us now. And you can see these tracks is because I've got scouting skills. So if you see the tracks, you can go there. What we're going to do now is just going to ride up to. Let's just go into here first. If we can get some more troops. Though the, because the, the faction leader's just come through, he's just stolen all the troops. Uh, fish. It's average price, I'm not going to. Obviously, the beer I bought was a bad investment. I'm just going to come up to our camp. I recruit troops, we've got one. This gives me nine troops. Trade. And if I come into here now, you will see that what we should be able to get is more scope here, Chikand. And we could buy fish here and go and sell it in Chikand, which we probably will do, but not in this part. What I want to do in this part is just get up and see. Oops, we'll loot this. Just back to town. I'm not going to worry about tournaments. I don't want to be distracted. We'll, we'll be looking at tournaments later on. Um, this is where I want to go. Here's that. Yeah. I've got eight looters. Now, what should be is step horses. Wow, they're still pretty expensive, but then they're probably it's probably one of the cheaper locations. I'm going to I'm going to just take all five. And I'm going to get those there. The grain is cheap as well. And the cheese is... It's 35% cheaper. We're going to buy a couple of cheese. Because if I show you down in the... Well, let me just cancel this first. And I'm just going to leave here. If I look to show you party morale, if you've got various food, you can actually improve the your party food situation. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to... Now give these guys a bit of a promotion. And I think just to finish off, we're going to because we can now chase them. We got the upper hand. And we're gonna attack. Oh great. It's gotta be trees, isn't it? Okay, thank you, game. And you stand here. Get moving! Stand there. Horse Mounted archers. On I want you behind. Okay. So cut them down. We're actually losing a few recruits here, but that's, that's the way it goes. These low-level recruits are quasi-expendable, and we've won the battle. Um, We've got five managed to get level up, but we actually let one died. And there's two wounded over here, so we should get two looters. <laughs> uh, two prisoners, yes, thank you. And what I'm going to do is one, two. I think that would be all the horsemen. So I think we've now got five. And I'm just going to grab that. And what I'm going to do is mark the fish uh, we got there got some cash and um, uh, um, we can get back to here um, sell off that and they've got no step horses here thank you again okay. now there is other places where we can get horses cows parties sheep Cheap. I think we're gonna to have to go south. Someone's bought all the horses around here. Okay, let's just go up to here. And maybe we can do a bit of trading. Um, uh, 90, I think we can afford to get another four. Um and when you buy horses, you need horses for two reasons. One you need them for your upgrades and two if all your party are mounted in horses on if all your party are mounted on horses they actually your party moves quicker we're just going to go that way leave that here what we got here 
haven't seen stolen goods, not interested. And just to finish this video up, I'm just going to give this guy the promotion. So we've now got six tribal warders, um, six tribal warriors, and two nomads. And just check actually, you like this is an army of nine. Uh, and I'm just going to run up to here. I think I've got enough um, horse archers now, and what I need now is a little bit of a front line. So we're just going to recruit around here. Or castles a waste of time. You can see we still got a a speed of eight because because we've got mounted troops. This is one of the advantages of actually having mounted troops. That gives me a 11. I think what we're going to do is just run down to here. More troops, yeah, two more. And I think that is and be enough. Well, then 13 is probably a bit unlucky, so ah, let's come down to here. Maybe they have some more step horses here. Uh, 113. I'm running out of money, so uh, recruit troops. We're just going to recruit one more troops. We've now really got to start getting out and doing some damage to the locals, but that will be for the next part. So this is where I'm going to leave it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you found it interesting. And until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.